Friday. We're back. We're live. Yay. If you've never seen this show before, this is Finance Friday. This is the show where our goal is to transform your relationship with your money by giving you the information you need to grow and protect your wealth. Let's share this out today because this is one headline that is obviously still about China trade, but it's just a discussion about the facts actually read the document we're not getting it from like a news source so we're just going to go over the facts so share it out we're going to talk about how it affects your money everybody likes to know am i going to make money am i going to lose money everybody likes to know that so share it out which is what i'm doing right now i'm amy novakovich this is ryan wilson hey everyone follow us on oh, it's gonna be loud follow us on twitter at noble wealth management mgmt we give daily fun little statistics and you know, facts, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, check out our YouTube videos. We have a bunch of a YouTube video library, Instagram, all that fun stuff. All right, cool. I'm still trying to share this out as I'm talking. Okay. So, China trade deal, if you've been living, well, not necessarily if you've been living under a rock, because I guess not everybody knows, like, our business. Yeah, like but I think you've probably heard the talk. Heard in some kind of the last, last 18 months yeah. that we've kind of been in this whole trade war it wasn't really a trade war but that's what that's probably what you heard well a trade I'm sure war with china heard, yeah. but in a war with china mm -hmm. which we weren't but we were trying to get a deal with china mm -hmm. right so everybody's anticipating the deal and then a couple months ago it was announced we had phase one well just this week There's president trump signed the, the deal phase has been inked. one trade deal yeah. so it is now official done and we want to go over some of the specifics that is actually in the document yeah. itself. Yeah. Again, not from a news source. Right. So why don't you start? Why don't you start with some of the main like highlights? So highlights of it um, from yes. what I read, the first chapter, I think it's broken into eight chapters, I want to say. But the first chapter is all about okay. intellectual property and um, the new kind of governing of the intellectual property between China and U.S., um, a lot of the well, stop right there for one second. I don't know if anybody's knows this, but China and it's documented. I mean, yeah. you ask any of the CFOs, the corporations, and there was a, a CNBC article that said one out of five CEOs said that in the last year, China had taken their intellectual property, which means yeah. they're stealing. So they're stealing, you know, trade secrets, uh, their patenting, ideas, their yes, ideas. Patents, um, and a lot of that, if, and I did a, a alive in September um, with Zach Lombardo and Joey Coleman. And we talked a little bit about intellectual property and kind of this, how this the China thing affected it. So go watch that. It can kind of speed you up on some of the intellectual property um, stuff that we talked about. It was really great. Yeah, it was a good video. I had fun with that one. So, um, so yeah, so, so China for the past 40 years, pretty much since intellectual property, uh, can be stolen via electronically mainly, but even before that through manufacturing probably and um, eh, probably then because before then China was That was doing before a whole lot. really like the internet obviously. The boom of but China boom in general. Of internet, but you know, even before internet. Yeah, because saying. intellectual property isn't just electronic intellectual right. property. Um, it can be, you know, an example that they use in that video I'm talking about is taking a coach manufacturer and it's a, it's a factory that makes coach purses and they make coach purses with a K instead of a C. And it's the same purse, same, they can do that in China. Um, because they get to own portions of your business. Like right. if you open a warehouse over there or whatever, yeah. they have control. They have the rights as, as it was, as it was standing before this trade right. deal. Um, I even heard from one of, one of my clients cause he had a, a warehouse over there that they had owned 50% in order for him mm -hmm. to do business over there. They wanted 50% yeah. of his warehouse. So it's the real deal. So yeah, they own fifty percent. They they have access to whatever they want. Right, like you know, all your trade secrets, all the intellectual property. They know how to make the things. They got patents, and so that was what the, the chapter one was basically saying that China is no longer that no longer are they going to do that, but they're also going to be again enforcing. Um, it, their government's going to enforce it. So now, if you're thinking of opening a warehouse in China, yeah, hey, which the economy is booming, man. Maybe somebody was thinking of it. You know, you should really read the trade deal. Because it's all about intellectual. Well, and I think, yeah, and I think an in, in, interesting thing, and in what a lot of people will say, and what we've kind of said even today is, okay, but what's going to make them do this? Like, what's going to make them follow this? And and I think that, which is a valid statement. Again, going back to the video I did in September, there's this uh, protocol called the Madrid po Protocol, which you know 
most of the EU, Canada, Mexico, US, and China, amongst a lot of different countries. So they, how nerdy we are that we just read this stuff. So yeah. This is why you guys don't have to. You know, you get your quick little. And I hope this is interesting, of- but I think it's just more just that you know that China is involved in that Madrid Protocol, which says that they're going to enforce intellectual property, patents, uh, copyrights, those types of things. Well, they weren't doing it. Now they they do it for their own companies. So if a Chinese company gets infringed upon in Canada, they're going to go after them, but they won't do vice versa. Vice well. Versa. Right. So the hope with this is I think that on a one-on-one kind of a, a direct deal is that um, it'll kind of increase accountability that if this happens and they've also through this document set up kind of a, a process of due diligence going through kind of a almost a court process in an international court um, that they'll kind of meet together. They'll try to come up with a, a plan and, and then go from there. They also say that you can they're each if they don't come up with a a solution. Um, the countries, the country that feels that they've had something stolen from them, can uh, implement tariffs and things like that, which is kind of what we've seen is kind of a bargaining chip now, which some people are against. That's fine if that is you, but You're that's talking, really. yeah. that's one of the things. I'm trying to fit in a lot. Know, it's a lot of information, and so I'm trying to just get that. Okay, so intellectual property. That's chapter one. Okay. And uh, switching the burden of proof to the person that's actually being accused rather than the accuser. Uh, which is interesting that it's not like an innocent till proven guilty, but if they come after you, then you have to prove that you didn't do it. Then you have to prove that you didn't do it. Which so anybody be can accuse. Yeah. Anybody can accuse. Hey, Tiffany. Anybody can accuse, but the one making the accusation doesn't have to prove it. Yeah. Which will be interesting, interesting. how that kind of how this plays out over yeah, the next sure. year or so. Um, Another thing in there, so we'll move on to another one. Intellectual property, I think, is probably the biggest thing, and then probably, yeah, probably the least interesting. I think people are more interested in this, like what's gonna possibly change in the prices of their phone. And well, that so so that isn't going to change yet. Um, we've the, in the deal, they've reduced some tariffs. Um, the majority of the tariffs are staying on until phase two gets done. Right. Trump is using it as, and he kind of admitted it's but a bargain. China is chip. supposed to buy more. Right? So they're buying they're more, buy more, right? So, yes. so that if that's the we want to talk about that. That's, so that let's increases talk. demand. So they're going to over the next two years increase um, their imports to China by two hundred billion dollars. Um, so it's in the first year it's seventy six billion dollar increase, and in two thousand twenty it's going to be one hundred and twenty three billion. So it's not like an even 100 billion split. Um, and those include manufactured goods, agriculture, which is going to help the farming out. You've probably heard that like soybeans, have been, soybeans you know, that they're, they're bailing the out the farmers and yes. all of that. And so that's going to be something that they're going to re, they're going to start buying. So this is more than just an increase. It's actually, they're going to rebuy again. So they stopped importing soybeans and uh, rice Which and a lot of different things. so much. I mean, that was a legit struggle. Yeah. So they went from the number one importer of agriculture to five, the fifth highest, and now they're going to kind of go back up. So they're going to start going back to the level that they were in 2017. And, and that then was they're in response to the tariffs. Right. It that was, wasn't, it was it wasn't just a normal little, decrease. That was in response to right, our tariffs. Right. So it was part of the whole trade war. Right. Um, and so they're going to, so agriculture is going to go back up. So back to the level it was, and then some is kind of the, is what the real pro of this is. It's not just going to go back to how things were. It's they're actually going to increase their, their imports. So energy, oil, things like that. And then services, which is like intellectual property, since they're going to have to, they're going to have to actually start buying it. Um, they're going to start opening up the financial service industry, which you guys probably don't care about, but those are things that services they're going to start importing. Vehicles, oh, that's right. That was another big one in May. Yeah. It was the vehicles. Vehicles, uh, sheet yes. metal, things like that. Yes. They basically cut off most of our imports and they're going to, they're opening yeah, back they're up. Opening so all back up. So that's the, that's really the biggest thing that, yeah. that I guess most people care about. Um, well, and I think the other big piece of it that we haven't even talked about specifics, but this was a big, like, gray, dark cloud mm-hmm. f- for the last year, year and a half, that everybody made the argument that there was going to push us into a recession yep. and all this. So now that clears that out of the way. So we would like to think that the market will continue to push higher. Mm-hmm. If you follow the stock market at all or you follow your 401ks or you're interested in how much money you make in your 401ks, your IRAs, and your investments – I would highly suggest, now this is not a recommendation, but I would highly suggest to a customer that is interested in growth, that is has a long-term time frame, 
that they come to me and they say, you know, look at my investments in my 401k. What should I be invested in? At this time, I would probably move more away from international, more into U.S., the U.S., so anything that says S&P 500 fund or portfolio. Mm -hmm. I would move more into that simply because the market doesn't like uncertainty, and that was a huge uncertainty that, you know, was looming over the market, and now it's really just the impeachment left. Really nothing else. All the election. Yeah, the election's coming up in November. Um, But I think there's some really good things in this that really – there's really three main things, and the third one I won't really get into because Amy's basically telling me you guys don't care about them. But um, it's that they're not going to. I would say the third. The third thing is that they're not going manip- to manipulate their currency, and so um, they're going to just kind of follow. Any comment? Do you guys care? Um, tell me. Yeah. So I, I just think that these are bigger things care. because these are the things that they were, you know, like the trade war was looming. These were the big topics of why this could hurt us, and right. these are the three For main sure. things. That are now being lifted. So in the first phase of the three phase deal that's going to happen, they're lifting the majority of the things that were really they were pointing to to, that could cause us to go into recession. So that's why I think these three things are important. Maybe maybe as an average consumer, you don't necessarily care about it, but it's a big deal because these were the three things that the U.S. really, really wanted. And we got them in the first deal. And it was the arguments that was going to push us into recession. Like if there's no trade deal, things are happening and the. The, the, the and market manipulation was a big thing because manipulation yeah, was happening. Yeah. So, like Ryan said, that's why it's kind of important yeah. because it's all lifted now. Yeah, which is pretty great. Yeah, and some people may say, "Well, it, time will tell whether we're able to actually enforce it." Yeah, true. I mean, when you're talking of the two, some two of the largest economies in the world. Um, no, the two largest. Yeah, two. Yeah, of, yeah the yeah, two yeah. largest economies in the world. Yeah. Um, we just hope that. That the deals, you know, they sign it and they're going to be in, in good faith. I mean, that's really all you can do yeah. at this point, other other than you know, starting. Well, somebody to had mentioned to me war. yesterday that we're still getting taken advantage of from the Chinese, and that's that's true. Partially I mean, true. Yeah. I mean, we've grown their economy as much as it has grown. If you wondered how China got here, it's really us. We've been feeding, juicing it up for yeah. the last thirty years. So, I mean, we're now going to just get taken advantage of less is yeah. really the summary of it if you're really kind of saying well where do we stand now well better than we were before because before look at they were they were pacing to be bigger than us mm-hmm. within five years is the pace that they were going yeah so because our gdp had way slowed down and theirs has always been up like growth when we say gdp we just mean the growth of the economy mm-hmm. like how much dollars do they bring in and they were pacing six seven percent and that's coming down they yeah. were in double digits. They were coming down, and then we're sitting here at two, two and a half percent yeah. growth. Well, and I think something that is interesting too is that because of this uh, exports for the U.S., they're saying, and again, these are predictions, but if they hold up to these, this could um, grow our GDP by about a half a half a point, uh, which is huge, which is big. So which is big. again, pointing to recessions that if we're not, if that gets us half a point, then yeah. you know. We won't so, like last that. year at this time, I think I was telling people, they were saying, you know, when do you foresee the next recession? We're hearing recession. It's been 10 years. There's on average a recession every 10 years. When do you see a recession? And I was saying, you know, 18 months from the time that we see payrolls really starting to move in that direction mm-hmm. of rising, uh, not payrolls, but um, jobless claims. So rising, uh, the unemployment rate, essentially, consistently rising. Mm -hmm. When we start seeing it tick up, like maybe like two, three, uh, I don't know, maybe two or three times consistently up, uh, then I would say about 18 months out from that, we have a recession. Well, we're nowhere near that. And now that we've gotten the China for phase one of trade deal, I really wouldn't be concerned about a recession. Now, market pullback. Mm-hmm. is different yeah and I, from recession yeah and we, like a market pullback is just like a temporary dip in the market that could happen for any reason at all and then one of the things that i've heard could be a reason for that is that the expectations are going to be increasing yeah. um because these earnings the last year almost have really been powerful and so i think that they're saying that they could increase the expectations which then if you don't meet the expectations then that can cause a pullback not necessarily a recession um, but right. just those pullbacks because companies and investors get really by uh, definition a recession is two negative quarters of growth right so you really have to have an economy that is contracting you really mm-hmm. can't fake 
a recession. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, even if the consumer spending, even if everybody in the U.S. thought, oh my gosh, a recession is coming, so I'm going to stop spending money, which is part of the U.S. growth is mm -hmm. what we spend on money, if that makes sense. And if we all stop spending money, then I guess that could put us into a recession, but that would be really hard to get the consumer to do that, you know, just off of headlines. It would have to be affected by something other than just a headline. It has to be your pay is decreasing. Job loss. Job, job uh, scarcity. You yeah. know, I feel like if I lose my job, where am I going to go? Right. You know, uh, housing costs, rents increasing mm -hmm. so much that it's digging into your bills, things like that. So, you know, we really foresee in the future, in the near future anyways, that we're not going to uh, be struggling with a recession, but. And this is a big, you know, pressure off the deal. Yes, right. So, so again, for those of you that missed it, I know we just lost, just lost the light. For those of you that missed it, this was probably the biggest takeaway. Uh, if you have 401ks or IRAs, um, the trade deal that Ryan went over the specifics, very important that those were the looming ideas that was going to put us into a recession. So at this point, I would take a look at your 401ks, IRAs. If you're sitting in international funds and they just say international right in the fund, you don't have to be a financial planner to know the funds. And if you're unsure, please call us or message, message us or whatever. Us or, yes. Mm -hmm. But be looking more at the U.S. funds, the S&P 500 funds. They usually say uh, U.S. large cap growth, mm -hmm. anything like uh, growth. You know, and again, these are not recommendations, but we're just telling you it's probably time to take a look due to this China phase one trade deal. That yeah. I think it's very important. Yeah. It's a uh, yeah. good stuff. Everybody wants there to see is. how their money runs, right? Yeah. All right, guys, if you have any questions, obviously contact us through uh, the website, knowwealthmanagement.com or message us on Facebook and we will get to the Secure Act eventually. Mm -hmm. Most probably don't know the Secure Act, but it's all around retirement accounts. Hey, Sharon. Super exciting. So it, well, it means a lot, though. The Secure Act is going to change a lot. Like I mentioned the example oh, last I know. I know two weeks ago, I yeah. guess. Like they're raising the required minimum distribution age to 72 mm -hmm. versus 70 and a lot of other changes that we'll go over. Yeah. Great. Have an awesome weekend. Thanks, guys. See ya. See ya.